Well, good, good afternoon, everybody. And I wonder what's going on inside the dining room of the 1925 bungalow. Let's go see. Oh, I see a table filled. Now that's a table filled with beautiful glass and pottery, and it's all for sale right now in the old curiosity shop. That's the eBay store. Now I've been selling on eBay for 25 years. Indeed, almost <laughs> half of my life. My goodness. Yep, been there for a long time, and you can find the store. I'll put the link in the description box below. And everything runs Almost everything runs as a seven day auction. Now remember, depending on when you watch this video and when you go to the eBay store, some things might end up having already been sold. But at this moment, right now, it's all available. And as I've always said, you can subscribe to the eBay store. There's something in there that you click somewhere and they'll send you a notification every day when new items are listed. And if you don't want the notification, you can turn it off. Boy, don't we wish we could turn off that time to update the warranty on your used car thing. Well, I don't know how to do that, but you have control over what you get from the eBay store. I just don't want you to miss out. Okay, better pictures, full descriptions, blah, blah, blah. That's all in the listings. So we'll go quickly here because there's something else I want to do at the end of this video. Now, don't you fast forward, okay? I'm going to know if you did. No, I don't know if you did, but I, please don't do that. I want you to watch this. Two pheasants made in California by Maddox of California. They are sweet and they are proud, ready for your mantle. Or, hey, I'd put these on a dining room table and put, I don't know, an arrangement around them. There's the Maddox of California stamp or embossed signature on the bottom. No cracks, no repairs, no breaks. And we only have, uh, there's one tiny little pin prick of a, of a nick right there in his glaze. And I think this little dude over here, uh, or maybe it was this one, somebody got busy pecking where they weren't supposed to be. And there's just a little tiny nip off the end of his nose. I think it's that one. I mean, it's so tiny, it's more felt than seen. But no repairs done on those. They probably date to the 19, late 1950s. The Pyrex Striped Bowl is in the shop as well. Don't need to do much explanation on that. This piece over here, I think, is Victorian era, although you saw color combinations like this again in the 50s, but the way the gold was done was a little bit different, and the porcelain quality on this is just so good. Look at that. Now, the only thing on the bottom is a number seven. There are no chips or cracks on this at all. It's a good size, and I suppose that could be some type of a candy dish if you'd like it to be. Scalloped edges. But wow, look who steals the show. It's the Payton City Glass Company somewhere in West Virginia. I guess in Payton City. These two pieces are called the crow's foot pattern, and that one is just a big, massive console bowl with a slight rolled edge. You can see that that's a nine inch span on my hand right there, so this is a good probably 13 inches across. Peyton City, I believe, if I remember, went out of business in the 1950s, so this is all 1930s and 40s era glass. They were known for their rich red color. Red was expensive. They were using gold to make red 
I know Anchor Hocking figured out how to do it without using any gold in the late 30s when they produced their Royal Ruby Red. I'm not sure about the Payton City, but it's such a rich, beautiful color. This three divided candy dish is in excellent condition. That's the crow's foot, which is the pattern. And then there's a large bowl over here, which could be a console bowl, and it's footed. Also in ruby red, and it's also that crow's foot pattern, once again, by Payton City. Yeah? Absolutely stunning. And look at that console bowl. If you get that, fish around for Payton City uh, candlesticks to match. You'll find them. Way back there in the, I think, the Athena pattern by the United States Glass Company, circa 1912 or so, is a beautiful, heavy, ah, uh, EAPG water pitcher in excellent condition. And she is a beauty. Boy, people sure did dine in style in those days, didn't they? Mm hmm. Hetty Shoop. Boop, boop, a doop. No chips, no cracks. What? Are you kidding? And these are from the 40s? Yeah. It's a signed pair in excellent condition with. Did I already tell you no chips, no cracks, no repairs? Now, I don't know if he's charming her or if she's saying enough, enough. Anyway, let's hope that they're having themselves a good time. That's a pretty big horn to be tooting at her, but we'll turn one upside down and see the Hetty Shoop creations. Come on now. There we go. All right. So she was an interesting gal. Came from overseas. I think her husband was either a musician or an actor or something. And um, she started making pottery and then opened up a studio there in California. Hired a lot of people in the art world, performing arts world as well, to work for her as well as in the creative arts. And that's sort of typical of her work and the work of her studio, They're, those are really great and they do date to the mid 1940s. That's an early piece of stangle. In the colonial pattern, it's their tangerine color and that's not a chip on the front, it is a glaze skip. How can you tell? Well, you can. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get in and have it focus or not, maybe. But a bla glaze skip is going to be rounded around one edge where the glaze has rolled over but not quite gone as far as it's supposed to. Maybe I'll stick a, a, a picture in here so you can have a better idea of how I can tell it's a glaze skip and not a chip. There's that early mark which puts this, I think, in the 30s with that greenish interior. Let's back up here. Boy, that's really neat for the autumn season, isn't it? That's just beautiful. So there are no chips or cracks and other than that glaze skip right there, it's in super condition. Stangle Pottery made just about 60 miles north of me in Trenton, Trenton, New Jersey, years ago. Back there is the Westmoreland Thousand Island, Thousand Eye, Thousand Island, that's salad dressing. Console set, big old console bowl and two matching candlesticks, double light candlesticks. So, ooh, you're gonna get four candles, thousand eye. You ought to see when the light shines through this, all of these little bubbles put, uh, see, just barely see it. Let me see if I can get my light. There we go, there, look at that. See how it does that? So if you have an overhanging uh, light fixture over your dining room table, look how that's just gonna be sweet, sweet, sweet. We'll pull this light back in a little bit. Uh, one of the candlesticks, has its foil label still on it, which says Westmoreland Glass. I really like these, I just call them sort of like flying buttress. It's almost like frozen waterfall, frozen water fountain, wings sticking off of the edge. Fenton did a lot of that too, but I like the two of them, and there they are. Probably the most exciting thing, and have you ever heard me say rare? It's very rare. <laughs> People throw the word rare and they throw the word vintage in front of almost 
every one of their eBay listings. If you don't believe me, go check it out. But very few things are rare. I'll say rare and slash hard to find because, well, I just don't think there are a lot of them out there. Fran Taylor, gay fad, 1940s. She really pushed the envelope with mid-century barware. And here I've got five of the taller cocktail tumblers, whiskey, what, I don't know what you drink out of them. And then the little guys, you know, on the rocks, whatever you're supposed to say. But uh, because I'm not familiar with it, but you'll know, those who know. So five of the little ones, five of the taller ones. They're in excellent condition. They're not marked. I understand that sometimes there were labels, but look what's on these. Oh my goodness. Vacuum tubes. Where's a good old radio vacuum? Right there. I have been in the back of so many 1937 Zenith radios. Look at that vacuum tube. That's for a radio or the audio component of early television. That's some type of an insulator. There's another small tube. That's another vacuum tube. And then here we have somewhere. Look, there's a television tube. These are unreal. Some more tubes and capacitors and condensers and things. Now, I the only other examples I found, there's a cocktail shaker out there. And I think somebody's asking about 150 bucks just for, well, no, it wasn't a cocktail shaker. I think it's like the big pitcher where you would stir the cocktails, whatever you call that thing. But I haven't found any tumblers listed anywhere. Was this something custom? Did RCA order this as retirement gifts or was it a part of the Fran Taylor catalog available to the general public? I don't know. Maybe somebody can dig and, and let me know, but hey, I got these in the store. I've got them in the store. And if you're into, vint if you're into vintage 1950s era barware, you couldn't expect to find these in better condition with no loss at all to the graphics. And I don't think you'll find any more for quite some time. In the front, probably from the 1930s, beautiful emerald green with silver overlay. Look at these. Now, a picture would have come with these. It's gone. But you've got the six little four-inch tall uh, tumblers here. I didn't polish these. You can. Go slow. Be careful. Or leave them the way they are. I like the ruby color. These could be uh, uh, European made probably, uh, were, but not necessarily because American companies did this as well. And these are unmarked, but no, no damage on the six of these. I like that. Boy, can you imagine putting these with some, oh, well, let's try it. Get, you, get some ruby colored glass. Look, I know you don't stick a tumbler in the middle of a console bowl like that, but Christmas time, mm -hmm. or any time. And then down in the front here, a wonderful survivor. I believe this is a Bryce Brothers covered uh, butter. I think the pattern is called Lorne, but I might not be remembering that correctly. But I think we're back into the 1880s or 90s with this. Remember, this dates to about 1910, 11, 12. That's sort of Edwardian over there, the U.S. glass piece. And then this pattern glass here uh, is undamaged. Now, 120 years old. 130 years old, 135 years old, and there's not a chip on it. The liner or underplate is connected to the bowl. See there? It's just fantastic. I guess it's I guess it's for um I guess it's a covered butter. It's not the traditional shape of a covered butter. But I know, I know that butter came in, um, people in those days had homemade butter and it didn't come in a stick or a big clump. Rather, it's oftentimes it did come in a clump. And remember a lot, um, 
So depending on where you got your butter, whether you made your own or not in the 1880s, it might have just been plopped in there. I think that's butter. So we'll put the lid back on the top. It's beautiful table glass. And, uh, and now let me back up, stand back up. Okay, you see, I don't save all the good stuff for the live sales. And as I promised, I'm putting two to three items in the eBay store every other day. And sometimes I'm listing something every day. So it's great to be back, really working on that eBay store. I love doing it and I appreciate all of the eBay uh, customers as well as, as well as live sale customers. Appreciate that so much. Okay, um, I'm gonna do something else with you in just a second, but while I'm talking about it, let me remind you, I'll see you Monday night. I don't normally do a live sale on the last Monday night, but I've got some more autumn glass to sell. And so we're going to do that Monday night, the last Monday of September. And then I think the first live sale in October, I'll be in another location. Surprise, surprise. So I'll be, we're still going to have live sales throughout the month of October. Uh, so, all right. Now, I told you I was going to do something else. Let's go do it. Well, just before we leave today, I want you to see the beautiful jewel tones of some lovely stretch glass pieces, two of which I've had, and the third one I just bought um, in an antique store here in South Jersey. I got a great price on it, and I'm keeping it in my own collection. Now, these three pieces, um, the most recent one we've seen is this cupped candy dish here before and when we say cupped the way the edges roll in around the top like this um, this did not ever have a lid so it's not missing a lid it's just an open candy dish uh, unsigned none of these are signed but um, we know for certain that the Florentine green was made by Fenton. And I don't remember whether this was an, uh, a Northwood or a Fenton. I just simply can't remember at the moment. Um, you know, I write these things down and then sometimes I forget. Um, but really the beauty of the glass is what I like. So uh, we can see the stretch marks there. That typical onion skin. Mild on this. Very pronounced on this one. And then the pretty green color here is Fenton's Florentine Green. That's also uh, an, uh, a footed bowl, which could be for candy. But look at the Vaseline example that I have back here, which, I, as I said, just bought it. It uh, also is stretch glass. All of these are stretch, which means they were fired twice. Sprayed with a special chemical uh, mineral salt type uh, concoction. And then they sort of handle it again. And you get the wonderful stretch marks. You really see it on this piece, piece here, which also might be Fenton. I just, again, I'm not too picky about who the maker is, look at that. You can really see the, the stretch marks on this piece. Um, Fenton did continue to make some stretch glass again, oh, in the 80s, probably even in the 90s. And they, they did a great job, but as far as I know, they, they might be the only company, they might've been the only one still in business, I think that was an original uh, stretch glass maker that then continued to make some stretch glass later on. But just really pretty pieces. And of course, you know, we already know that that's Vaseline glass and that's not. These both have uranium, but the Vaseline is always going to have more of a, much more of a yellow tint than, than green, although it can vary. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for either one of these. I paid $25 and I think I got a little bit of a discount off on that in the antique store. So that's one piece that I will treat to myself and keep in, in a very small and slowly growing collection of art glass, of, not art glass, but this is all factory made by the way, not, not, not hand done except for some of the tooling. It's all done in a mold. 
And, uh, but it's really just beautiful glass. I've always enjoyed stretch glass. It's one of the first types of glass that I started reading about a long time ago. I just wanted to share that with you. Well, everyone, we began staring through the window into my living room, and I guess we'll end up that way. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. We'll see you Monday night at the live sale. Check out the eBay store if you get a chance over the weekend and have yourselves a lovely time on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no matter what you find out yourself doing. Maybe I'll go shopping and take you with me. That's it for now. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. Now, my goal for the rest of the day is to finish painting my ceiling, because I never did.